Nowadays, with the development of electronic industry, more and more devices are functioning in high frequency and super high frequency bands. It seems as though there is no difference what is used high, low frequency or a direct current, but in reality there is a big difference. The thing is that high frequency current behaves quite differently because of the possibility to create electromagnetic oscillations transmittable at a distance. Many components also start behaving strangely. Let's see how diodes behave in high frequency circuits. Right after solid state diodes were invented, when the crystal gallon was used as a rectifier, it became clear that the sharper the needle, adjacent to the crystal, the better the signal detection. Later the industry started producing the so-called detector of point diodes. They were designed to work in high frequency circuits of various radio sets, for example of D9 series. So what's the difference between the diodes of 226 series, which have quite satisfactory parameters but, but are unable to work at high frequency, and point diodes of low capacity, which in this case are practically indispensable? There are two factors to explain the reason, but they become apparent only when we increase frequency of an electrical current. The first factor is the reverse bias PN junction capacitance, a so-called coupling capacitance. Because of it, the diode seems to be bridged by a capacitor with capacity from several picofarads for point diodes and several thousand picofarads for high power rectifier diodes. The presence of such capacity is conditioned by the diode structure. At reverse switching, it has two areas which conduct current, though poorly. They are divided by a dielectric which is locked up by a PN junction. Capacitance value depends on the crystal size in the di diode frame or more exactly on the PN junction area. The more powerful the diode, the bigger the area. It is clear that for a direct current the capacitance in peak of ferrets in a, is a circuit break. For frequencies of hundreds of kilohertz it is a resistor with high resistance and for super high frequencies it is a feed-through capacitor, simply a conductor. The second factor is the diode's inertness, that is how quickly the diode opens and closes and resistance necessary to open it. These two parameters are interconnected. The presence of both of them is again conditioned by the inner structure of a PN junction. So to open the diode a certain potential is needed so as to move the charge carriers into the PN junction area. The material, which is called semiconductor for a reason, brings resistance to the process. The more the volume of the crystal, the more resistance we need to open the diode. At blocking the charge carriers, must return to their places, having been evenly distributed in the whole of the bulk of a semiconductor. They will spend some time on that, which is determined by the length of their way. This again depends on the size of the crystal. Thus rectified diode, when operating at high frequency, does not have time to close, and a significant backward current is set through it. So that is how diodes behave in high frequency currents.